Hey guys, it's a day of big shifts, major shifts. I'm making some big changes today to my schedule, to my Kanban board, to my plan. But first, I need coffee. Let's get some sun, baby. It's time to go. Hey, so I have not often blogged from the floor and there's needs to be swept, but this is what we're doing today. I have my coffee and now we are going to chat. So <laughs> I have made some adjustments to my Q1 plan because what I have really started to understand about myself especially right now that I have started YouTube, I'm doing courses, I'm doing planners, I'm doing all of these things that I've always wanted to do. I have a baby, we're building a new house. There's a lot of exciting things happening in my life right now. But my passion is bigger than my available time. And I am having a hard time containing the things that I really want to do into the amount of time and space that I have. Now, obviously, you guys know the Kanban board back here, like I have a plan and I have a way of planning. But one of the things that I love about the HB90 system is that it's flexible. It's not like, oh, if you can't fit into this box or if you mess up, you're over and done with and it's a big failure. <laughs> Instead, this plan is adjustable to the time of your life that you're going through. And what I am finding more and more right now in my life is that I want to do so many different things. I want to do audiobooks. I want to write multiple different series. I want to have a printed planner. I want to be, you know, writing every day and spending tons of time with my kids. I want to be going to the beach. I want to have the ability to run out to Starbucks if I get a chance. Um, I want to keep my house clean and tidy, but I also want to keep up with my spiritual practice and do full moon rituals and um, learn more about herbs and other witchy things. Things. and I want to keep up with my YouTube lives and hang out on social media and I think that a lot of us are going through the same thing in various ways. Basically it's kind of like having an appetite bigger than your stomach or what's that saying? Google, what's the common saying about, I guess my eyes were bigger than my stomach. Google to the rescue. Having eyes bigger than your stomach when you put more on your plate than you can possibly do. Like I have eyes bigger than my stomach. I have passions and dreams and desires that are bigger than my time frame. And while the HB90 system works really great and allows me to get more done than I ever did in my life before, there are sadly still limits on what I'm able to do and still maintain a healthy mental state of mind. And what I have found over the past few months, you guys witnessed it during NaNoWriMo, I didn't really get as much of a break in December as I wanted, and then had to finish the book and get it out in January, but that was not like then I could rest because then I had a new course launching and I had updates that had to be made, had a new book, a new short story, like tons of other stuff that just continued to build on. And I feel like while I planned my Q1 according to the time I had available, what I didn't fully take into consideration is where my mental health is right now. And the fact that we've been in lockdown for over a year, a lot of my resources, and I know you feel the same way, have been taken from me. Like I used to go out writing every single week with friends. Now I see almost no one. Like I see you guys online, but I never see anybody. I don't see friends. I don't hang out with people. I don't have family I see. So it's been isolated here in our home. And and I think it just is meaning that I can't put as much stress on my shoulders as I would have been able to two years ago before I had a baby, before I had a um, pandemic and all of this other stuff to deal with. So I know many of you can certainly relate to this. So long story short, what this basically boils down to is I have decided after really having a struggle of a weekend trying to force myself into this next book and looking at the calendar and realizing that I essentially have two and a half months to write two full novels novels and realizing that one, I would either have to 
push myself to ridiculous limits, not see my family, probably not eat healthy, and just daily force myself into submission in a way so that I could get that many words down. And then in the end, probably come out with two books that are half of what they could have been or I could make an adjustment. So yesterday I went live on my Sarah Cannon channel, which is my fan channel here on YouTube. I would love for you to come join us. We have a really great community there and I go live three times a week with coffee chats and Q and A's and, and live readings. Last year during the pandemic, I started that channel and I started reading my book, The Witch's Key as I was writing it. And it was super fun. And I wanted to do the same thing with The Witch's Door book two. And that was supposed to start January 1st. But as we all know, I was still working on Fate's Surrender at the time because I didn't get it done last year. So all it takes is that one book not behaving for my whole like domino effect for things to get pushed back and pushed back. But I have a pre-order on, I don't have an actual cover, but I have a picture of the cover. I have a pre-order on my next book, Vengeful Darkness. So this is book 11 in my best-selling series. So this is my most popular series. I've been writing it since 2010. It's sold over half a million copies of the books and been downloaded well over a million times. And I am writing book 11 and it has been a while. Readers have been waiting for book 11 for over two years and I have it up on pre-order for May 11th and I was starting to feel that pressure like a weight on my chest of there's no way I'm going to be able to write this difficult of a book four points of view book 11 the next to last book in the series that has to set up everything that happens in the end there's no way I'm going to be able to write that and write something else at the same time so what I decided after talking to my fans yesterday was I'm going to push the witch's door back yet again. It got pushed back during Nano. It's getting pushed back again. And instead, I'm going to be working on Vengeful Darkness. And when we decided that, we also decided that what I'm going to be reading on that YouTube channel is book four of my series. So last year, after The Witch's Door was over, I read books one, two, and three of the Shadow Demon Saga live on YouTube. So those are still up if you'd like to go read those, or you can download the first three books in a box set for free if you want to catch up before I start my reading coming up. But I'm going to read book four of the series. And I think that once I had that realization and that almost like permission to move forward, and to take a book off my plate. It was like my shoulders felt better. I think my skin got glow, like started to glow. I just felt like so much healthier and so much happier. And I immediately started to get my supplies together to start plotting book 11. So today's vlog after this long explanation of what's going on is going to be all about setting up this new book for myself because I have already a new plotting planner that I have moved from what you guys used to see which was a big happy planner a big eight and a half by 11 size into a classic size happy planner so I'll show you what the inside of that looks like as I'm setting up the plotting pages and everything else I also have four colors that I use for the four points of view in this series I've been doing this for years it is also giving me life part of why I'm on the floor today right now is because I have two big windows in front of me and it is 70 degrees and sunny and it's the last week of February which makes me think spring in Charleston is really just around the corner and you know it's probably going to get cold again a couple times but it's going to feel good for a little while here and I am so here for it. So let's get started on this book. I feel like this is a get everything together, get started on this book, reclaim my energy and really step into my best self rather than stepping into a book that is going to feel like I have to rush it to get done or I'm going to be behind. And you know, this is some of what I talked about during the NaNoWriMo Diaries too. But in the end, this is not an easy career. Being a writer is not an easy career. And especially when you are going at indie and you have all the other pressures and you're trying to get your books out faster and you're trying to compete with everybody else in the world, or that's what it feels like sometimes. It can be a lot of pressure to keep up with the fan demand, to keep up with the industry, to make sure that you're putting out your best book, but still being a great mom or friend or spouse at the same time and, and still taking care of your mental health. And I think that far too often, even me, but most of us as writers, we allow ourselves to slip into this place of 
not taking care of our mental health, not taking care of our bodies, and not remembering our joy in the process because we get so wrapped up in wanting so badly for the sales to come, for the progress and the momentum to please other people, to make the right choices, to market our books, to compete, to, you know, be our best selves. But the best self never comes if you are, you know, sacrificing your health and your joy in the process. So I thought I would talk about it today and share with you my process for recalibrating. This will be fun. I hope you enjoy it and let's go. Okay, so while that's printing, and I know that there's going to be people that ask me how I do it, I prefer to cut my paper first. I know that some people prefer to just go ahead and print it on letter and cut it afterward. I just always find it easier to cut the paper first and then print on it. So I cut the paper down to the right size, which is uh, 7 by by 9.29 or 9.3. This is a super long video, so I won't go too deep into this. If you guys wanna see a video on how I print for different printables, let me know. But everybody's printer is different, so it's hard to do like a universal tutorial. But what I've done is, if you want to, you've got this eight and a half by 11 inches, and what you could do is just print this on letter size and then print it at 82% custom scale. I like to cut my paper down first. So what I like to do is click page setup and then in the manage custom sizes here, I create my own size. So the paper size would be seven by 9.29, which is the official happy planner size. And then I'm gonna click okay. So now this is, you can see this is my happy planner size. So I'm gonna leave it at 100% scale. But then when I come out here, you can see that it's not going to print the entire image. So now instead of, I could go to 82% scale, but what I've found personally is that my printer prints better if I click fit to page. And then it's going to print this entire document and now I'm not actually going to print this first page because I don't need that in my planner my plotting planner so I'm just going to go pages 2 through 10 instead and that's going to give me all the pages that I need and I'm basically going to print this out four times for all the different characters and even though it's letting me choose print on both sides of the paper my printer actually will not print on both sides double-sided with this particular size of paper so it's what I'd like to do instead is actually go up to more options and I'm going to print all the odd pages first, and then I'm gonna flip the pages over and then print the even pages. But you can see here that it's printing, when I select fit, it's printing it at 82% scale. So if you want to do this on your own and you don't have the ability to set up these custom sizes, then you just set the custom scale to 82%, and it's basically the same thing as fit to page. So there you can see how it's gonna go. But I find my printer works better if I select fit to page and set up that page size. Printing your own stuff at home can be kind of frustrating and confusing. So just whenever you do it, make sure that you practice a few times first. So while those are printing, I'm going to adjust my Kanban board here. And the main thing is this goal number one. So I had the witch's door uh, post-its over here. So I'm going to pull those down. I'm going to pull the witch's key audiobook down and all the readings that I was going to do on YouTube. I'm not going to throw these away because I hope to do this in Q2 or three or four or somewhere during this year, but I am going to put them away for now. What you got? A backpack? Say yeah, backpack. Can you say hi? Say hello. A big bag. Yeah, backpack. 
So my mommy morning time has come to a close. While that is finishing printing off, I have already changed a few things. But what I need to do next is I, in order to make out all of the post-it notes for the readings that I'm going to do, I have to actually print out Shadow Demons and decide how I'm going to se separate the episodes and how many episodes there will be. It's about 60,000 word novel. So I just need to come up with a schedule and put it all on the post-it notes. But before lunch, since it is a gorgeous day outside, we're going to go for a family walk first. the coffee chats for the remainder of the quarter as well as the eight episodes that I'll be reading this quarter. Okay, so let's talk plotting supplies and what all I have gathered. Did I actually make an emergency trip to Office Depot last night? I did because I didn't have enough of the right color post-its. So you know, just a little extra shopping trip. But basically, I'm going to be using this pencil case. This is one of the new Hello Kitty pencil cases from Erin Condren, and you can actually change the color. So I might get another one eventually, but I love this little purple. It has a little pocket in the front that you could put sticky notes or whatever in, and then it also has these pen loops where over here I have a pencil, some scissors, a Sharpie gel pen, and then just another super tip. And then it's got a pretty wide like adjustable or it's not adjustable, but this is neoprene. So it kind of is stretchy little reservoir here that fits post-it notes and things in it like plenty. You can fit more stuff in here than you would imagine. So what I'm going to load this up with is all the stuff that I typically use to plot. And then I can just carry this with me pretty much throughout the house whenever I need to write stuff down. Now I also have a plotting notebook that I have over here that I will show you and we'll set that up in a little bit. But sometimes, especially if the baby is around right now, I can't have this whole notebook because she'll pull pages out. She'll draw all over it. Uh, she's in that stage almost a year and a half now. So she just gets into everything. So sometimes having a case that I can close and just pull out a single note card to work on is much safer. <laughs> so here's what I do when I'm plotting multiple POV. You guys saw this some with Fate Surrender, but this book has four points of view. It actually is going to have more than four, but it has four main points of view. And then the others are just kind of cameos. So I have just a plain white note card. This is like a five by seven note card where I have already gone through and chosen the colors of things that I'm going to use. I always like to pick out a marker to use and this can be some of the lesser expensive markers like the Crayola Super Tips which you can get a ton of them for like $20 or sometimes I'll use Tombow dual brush pens like this because they have the dual tip. So you've got just the kind of like small marker side, the fine tip side, and then you also have the brush pen side. But for this purposes, this time, I'm gonna use the super tips. So I went through my supplies and I found the ones that I felt like matched the post-it notes the clearest because the post-it notes are the hardest thing to get in multiple colors. So these post-its are perfect and they're from the Marrakesh collection for post-it notes. They're the super sticky ones. They also come with yellow, but I toss the yellow aside. And so I use these colors both in all of my plotting. I will mark which POVs because they alternate and they don't even exactly alternate. They just will go in and out. There will almost always be more Harper point of view chapters than anyone else. I use sometimes post-its in three different sizes for several different purposes. I also actually like and prefer, excuse the mess over here, to use this small type these little page flags but sadly I have not been able to find those page flags in red. I've got the purple and the blue but the green is kind of this yellowish green and then I can't find a red so I'd either have to maybe make them myself or just not use them. So I'm not going to use page flags this time. Instead I'm just going to use dots on my plotting sheets. 
So I got these from Amazon and they've got kind of a yellow backing, but the dots you can see are just the plain colors. So I've got the dots in all four colors. I also have stars and I will use this sometimes on the larger note cards, but I got these from the Target dollar spot years ago. They were a dollar for like a pack of 10. So I've got the three different sizes of post-its. I will likely use these lined ones out on my outlining wall, which I'll show you in a minute. I have the washi tape too. Is this necessary? No, it's not necessary, but it brings out the joy. It gets me excited. It also helps me organize my plotting notes so that I can mark off entire sections or I can, you know, have large plotting sections inside my planner and on my character sheets. I can mark them with washi tape so I know whose character at a glance. I also have grabbed some of these Oxford index cards in the four colors. But I haven't decided if I'm going to use the colored post-it notes or if I'm going to use the white post-it notes and just use the markers and the stickers. So I'll decide that as I'm going. I also have these click up markers. These are just like really fine or click art. These are just really fine tip markers that I might use on my plotting sheets instead of using the larger tip markers. And then finally, I have this uni style fit multi pin that is already loaded up with these four points of view. But then I also have a black in there as well, which I have used on the back to just write out about what I think each act is going to be. So act one is probably going to be between 27 and 30,000 words. And I'm aiming for about a 100,000 word novel, but it's probably going to be more like 110 or a little bit higher. But I have all my tools assembled and ready to go. The other thing I wanted to show you is that I have this um, set of note cards that are kind of like my little cheat sheets. And I have two of them that I had created at two different times. So I have this one on a hook here that talks about all of the main plot points that I follow and it has some of the cheat sheet stuff. But I recently grabbed this into one notebook from Jet Pens where it's kind of like a little mini binder and it opens just like a regular three ring binder opens. You just press this together and open so you can take the pages in and out. And so what I am doing with this is I have been going through and for the acts instead of using these because they tend to get dirty and then the edges get messed up. So I think it'll be more protected in here. This will be my little plotting cheat sheet note notes. And then I will use and put all of the different ends and everything in here that I need for the plotting. Now let me show you my plotting wall. So you guys have seen this before because I used it for Fate Surrender and I actually had it set up. You can see that there's a little bit of like residue here from where I pulled stuff off. I had it set up for the witch's door and had already started putting post-its on it but instead of resetting the whole thing I just put some purple masking tape around it and what I'm going to do today is print out some Polaroids so that I can see the inspiration for my characters here and then what I do with this plotting wall is I take those post-it notes and I play around with the flow of the story. I also so we'll use some Crayola super tips because they won't bleed through that art paper and I will write on this as soon as I am like brainstorming because for me I'm a super visual person and the more I can visually see the story out on a big storyboard like this the better off I'm gonna be and I know that it may seem extra for some people to say why are you using all the post-it notes all these different colors why do you plot in so many different places like in the index cards and stuff like that and part of that is just because I never know when ideas are going to come to me. So I have this board so that I can stand here, I can talk through it, I can see it visually. But then sometimes I might be up in bed and kind of relaxing for the evening and an idea will come to me. So I'll jot it down on the index cards. I don't try to make sure everything's perfect, but I just make sure that I have the notes that I need. And you can see it didn't go perfectly up on the wall. It's a little bit crinkled, but I am not a perfectionist, so I'm not going to worry about that. Or maybe I should say I'm a recovering perfectionist. But you can see I've got Act 1 here, the first half of Act 2, the second half of Act 2, and Act 3. And if you want to know more about how I plot in those four sections of a story, you can definitely check out my How to Plot Your Novel uh, series here on YouTube. And the next part of the plotting process for me is this plotting notebook. So I haven't done a full review of this one, but this is basically 
the same type of setup or similar setup to what I had previously if you've watched those videos, but now I'm in a classic size that I covered with all these different writerly kind of stickers. But deeper in, I have set up each book with its own section. So I need to reset this. I'm actually going to take the this next book, Vengeful Darkness, and I'm going to set up everything that I need in here. I want to be Okay, so I have spent some time setting up my planner the way that I want it to be. And what I have done here is I have used Canva and just a Polaroid template. You know, obviously these are not my images. These are images that I just grabbed from Google. And these are some of the actors that inspire you know, who I think my characters look like. So I am going to cut this out. I printed it on a full sheet label so it becomes sticker, sticky paper. And then I also printed a book cover if I can find it. And I will just go put this up on my plotting wall. And simple as that. <laughs> so I have the book cover and each of the characters up here. And I will use those same not just the post-it notes, but sometimes the stars, other images of locations or setting, like if there's a certain house that I'm thinking of or a certain magical spell or an item like a necklace, I will find photos online and put them up here. And I'll use those Crayola super tips as well as the post-its to mark down anything important here. And as I go, I'll put stuff about each character's arc up here on the board as well. So this is where we start a new plan new post-it notes, a whole new set of notes in my plotting planner, new stuff on the Kanban board, and most importantly, recalibrating instead of giving up. Sometimes we think we have to be perfect in order to get things done, but it's really not about being perfect. It's about deciding what direction you want to go in and then moving yourself in that direction. And if that means you have to change your plan along the way, you have to be flexible along the way, that's fine. Just don't give up. If you are interested in the way that I reset this board and how I sort of readjusted my plan and stayed flexible, if you want to learn this method of how I set three major goals and then break them down into tiny little pieces so that my schedule is more manageable, Remember, it's not about perfection. It's about moving yourself in the direction of your dreams. And even I am not always perfect. I'm never actually perfect with it, but I'm always moving forward. I'm always making progress and I'm happy along the way. And I hope that if this inspired you, you will consider joining my HB90 course. Our next round is March 14th and registration is open now. So I will leave that link for you down below. Make sure that you're subscribed and remember, even if you are behind on where you want it to be, it doesn't mean that you're behind on where you're meant to be. So keep moving towards those dreams and I will see you guys in my next video.